B6 is about uh, communicable diseases, which really just means something that you can, I suppose you can catch, is a simple way to put it, or it can be passed between organisms is, is maybe a better way. Um, so this is usually when we think of disease, what we tend to think of. We think of it as being something that you catch from somebody. Um, but not all diseases are, are communicable. Genetic diseases, for example, you can't catch. Um, you, you were born with them. So, um, first to just consider and remember that it's not just um, the, the communicable disease itself, whether it's a bacteria, a virus, whatever it may be. Um, things like your diet, particularly if it's a low protein diet, um, can make you more at risk of um, catching a disease. We should say actually, we, we come into contact with these, these things all the time. Um, I'll, I'll introduce this word actually here, uh, pathogen, which is really useful. It means a disease causing microorganism. So bacteria um, and viruses, fungi that cause diseases are, are called pathogens. Not all of them do cause diseases, but the ones that do are called pathogens. So if you have not much protein in your diet, you can't make as many antibodies. And antibodies are needed to help you fight off pathogens. So we're coming into contact with these things all the time, but a lot of it, um, a lot of the time our bodies are able to um, destroy the pathogen before it causes any problem. So when we become more likely to get disease, it's often because there's another underlying issue. So for example, um, poor diet, uh, stress makes us more susceptible, uh, often our immune system is, is weakened when we're under stress. Um, but we can also look for factors that, you know, if we look at people who are more likely or who seem to be getting more communicable diseases, um, you can even look at things like financial status, um, basically how much money you've got, I suppose, um, uh, sort of facilities like does the place you live have um, the ability to take away sewage and provide clean water? You know, okay, mainly this is um, more to do with um, less economically developed countries or if there's been a natural disaster for example you know and conditions have suddenly got a lot worse or people don't have the money to get uh, preventative measures so th those are things there are other things and you can include in here things like biological sex actually ethnic group um, that also can can influence how likely it is you, you you come across a pathogen so these things interact with each other it's not just um, you know, everyone is not exactly the same and we all catch the same disease in the same way. Um, there are other factors that are influencing it. So pathogens, basically we're, here, we're looking at uh, bacteria, uh, fun uh, viruses and fungi. Although there's another group as well called protists, which we'll come across uh, later on. Um, viruses, uh, sorry, we'll start with bacteria. Um, they're, they're pretty small, they're about one micrometer big, um, is, is a typical size. Um, very often they release toxins, so when we talk about, for example, things like food poisoning, that's often because the, the bacteria involved there release toxic substances into your body, um, and that, that's what makes you feel ill. Um, some of them do sort of directly damage cells, but you know that, that's a useful one to have in your mind. Viruses are slightly different. Um, they actually get inside of your cells. They need to do that. That's where they live normally. Um, and without getting inside a the cell, they can't make more uh, viruses. That's what they do. They get inside your cell. Um, they kind of release some genetic material like DNA um, or RNA. And they tell the cell to make more viruses. So your cell gets infected with a little virus and you make lots and lots and lots and lots of viruses until the cell explodes and all those viruses get out. Uh, it does make it quite hard to to get medicines to treat this because you know medicines uh, to try and get a medicine to go inside your, your cells, some kind of drug to destroy the viruses is quite difficult without at the same time destroying your cells. You know, a lot of viruses are quite weak. Um, it doesn't take that much to kill them. However, because they're in your body, you know, it's not as if you could um, drink disinfectant or bleach or something to get rid of the viruses because that will also damage you. So that's the problem with viruses that they're often inside. They're very, very small, much smaller than, than bacteria. Um, fungi and protists will come back to in a little while as, as specific examples. Um, this chapter also talks about ways to prevent uh, diseases. So um, there's the 
the guy Dr. Semmelweis, although you wouldn't need to remember the names um, of these people. Um, if you remember, he's the, the doctor who um, identified the need to wash your hands um, in order to prevent uh, pathogens being spread. Um, and then, of course, you've got people like Pasteur and, and Lister who were involved, um, I suppose, with things that we might understand now as being hygiene. So um, pasteurising things means heating them up, which will tend to destroy these microorganisms. Um, using antiseptics, and, you know, disinfectants, all the kind of stuff that you would think of as... Um, pretty normal stuff to, to control um, disease. Um, now a couple of examples now of um, different diseases. We start with uh, viruses, so viral diseases. Um, ones mentioned in the book are, are measles and HIV. Remember HIV uh, is, is a virus that causes um, the condition, the symptoms if you like, that are called AIDS. Uh, HIV, the virus, it gets into your cells, but the cells it gets into are your white blood cells, which normally fight things off. HIV destroys the cells, which means you can't then fight off other um, diseases. Now, if they're going to ask you about symptoms, um, I'm not going to, I don't have time to sort of go into the symptoms of every, all the diseases I'm going to mention here, so you might want to look them up, but you know, if you get stuck, it's always worth putting down fever um, or, or nausea, you know, oops, nausea, feeling sick. Um, because quite a lot of diseases have uh, fever and nausea um, as uh, some of their symptoms. Obviously measles, you'd have the spots, HIV, the weakened immune system lead to other diseases. But, you know, that's not a bad sort of um, one to kind of go for. Uh, bacterial diseases, uh, the ones mentioned as salmonella, commonly known as food poisoning, or form of food poisoning. Gonorrhea mentioned, um, the awful sort of awkward spelling. Um... You know, again, nausea, fever, sickness, gonorrhea has got the one with the discharge, the unpleasant smelling discharge. Now, this is worth remembering there aren't very many bacterial um, diseases in plants. One that is mentioned is something called galls, which are kind of um, blobs that grow suppose, on, on the plant, and they're caused by bacteria. Uh, fungi, on the other hand, there aren't many fungal diseases for animals. Um, the classic one people always remember, of course, is athlete's foot. Very, very common condition. But fungal diseases are not common in animals. Bacterial conditions are not common in plants. Um, plants do get a lot of fungi diseases, though. Um, the one mentioned in the book is, is rose black spot. Well, it's pretty obvious what the uh, the symptoms are going to be for rose black spot, isn't it? Uh, this is where those protists come back in, which I, I said I'd mentioned before. Um, Protists are, are an odd group, really. Um, when scientists were trying to put uh, the, these microorganisms into these different groups, and they had, uh, sorry, not just microorganisms, all organisms, you know, they had plants and animals, and they had fungi, and they had bacteria, and they kind of just got left with a load of things that didn't quite fit into any group, so they said, well, let's just call them protists, and sort of left it at that. We now know a lot more about them, and we know there are much better ways to classify them, but it's an odd group. Anyway, the, the only one you'll really come across is the uh, the protus, the parasite that causes malaria. And guess what? Uh, fever and nausea and tiredness are, are one of the problems with malaria. It infects uh, red blood cells uh, and, and gets into the liver. So I'll do this as a slightly uh, separate bit. They don't make a big deal of it in the book, but I think uh, there's some very important bits in here. Um, First, just to say that your body often prevents pathogens from getting in to start with. So all the things like your skin defences, mucus in the, the um, lungs and um, the, the windpipe, uh, your blood clotting stops things getting in, your skin is actually covered uh, in a layer of bacteria um, which take up all the space so other things can't really get in there. Sweat which contains anti-microbial um, compounds and so on. So there's lots of things to stop them uh, actually getting in to start with. If they do get in, you're relying on your uh, immune system. And what you're looking at here is white blood cells. Now there are actually lots of different types of white blood cells. They all do different jobs. Uh, but we don't need to know too much about them. 
but we do need to know a little bit. So one type of white blood cell will ingest pathogens. And that just basically means they, they swallow them. You know, here's my um, white blood cell and it comes across, here's a little bacteria. They kind of, um, they, they fold their way around it, sort of get it inside, you know, they're swallowing it. Uh, and then once it's inside, they destroy it. But ingesting pathogens is a, a straightforward way to put it. Um, some of them produce antibodies. I've used this word before. Antibodies are a type of protein. Um, they're typically drawn as sort of little, almost Y-shaped things like that. Um, and antibodies can either destroy, sort of destroy pathogens themselves, or they stick them together in big lumps so that these things can come along and get them. Um, they, they do various jobs, but here I think is the key bit that they don't make a big deal of. Um, what an antibody does is it attaches to an antigen. Now what's an antigen? Well, an antigen is pretty much anything um, on the surface of a cell. So here's a cell, it could be a bacteria for example. Um, you know, we, we typically draw cells, you know, sort of a blob, here's our uh, my DNA, my bacteria. But this isn't smooth, it's actually got little bits sticking off it and shapes and you know these all kinds of various chemical bits and bobs that are on there um we normally we don't draw them and these are all just called alt antigens okay um and it's a way to recognize cells so your own body has antigens in there but your white blood cells can detect them and say oh i know what those are those are my own cells i'll leave them alone if it detects one of these antigens these shapes it doesn't recognize that's when it attacks it that's why uh, if you had a, an organ transplant, so if someone had a heart from another person, the body would not recognise the cells. It would look at it and say, hell, these antigens are different to what I'm used to. Let's attack it. And that's called rejection. Um, and just the other one to say is uh, some white blood cells produce antitoxins. Remember that some bacteria release toxins into your body and that can make you ill. Uh, some white blood cells release these antitoxins, which is a substance that will... Um, neutralize or get rid of those antitoxins for you.